All right, so we're going to talk about multi-phase flow. Specifically, we're going to talk about a multi-phase flow model called the black oil model. I'm sure you guys have seen it. You covered it in res 2, I guess. Um, you know, we, we, you can also have more sophisticated multi-phase or multi-component models. These would be so-called compositional flow models where essentially you're going to write mass balances on every comp every single component that could be in a mixture, ethane, butane, you know. In a, in a black oil model, we lump, right? So we lump all those components into essentially three phases, an oleic phase, a water phase, and a gaseous phase. Of course, water is just water, um, but in the uh, oil phase, you could have dissolved gas in the oil phase, and of course, oil. And then in the gaseous phase, you could have potentially, of course, gas, and also volatilized oil. So we're going to write mass balances on the phases, but we're going to take into consideration the fact that you could have those components from the volatilized, specifically volatilized oil uh, in the gas, and you could have dissolved gas in the oil. We're going to have to take that into consideration when we write the mass balances. Now, ultimately, when in a true black oil model, we typically um, don't allow, you know, we, we, we disallow volatilized oil, or we don't consider volatilized oil in a gas, but we'll, we'll write the equations general enough, and then as an assumption at the end, we'll say that there's no volatilized oil in the gas, okay? So, you know, some other, just other brief uh, assumptions on the black oil model. And, uh, you can have the gas component in the oil or or flowing separately gas does not dissolve in the water Water and oil do not mix. Okay, so we're going to write the mass balance equations, and we're going to start with the simplest one, and we've in fact already seen it, but we're going to do this in 1D, of course. So we have our 1D core. We're going to flow material, flow mass through. We're going to ex examine a little differential sliver of it. And so this guy's got thickness dx, the differential <coughs> distance x. This is the distance along the core, x. Right? Uh, so there's really nothing different here. We've done this before in class, beginning of class. So if we look at that guy, it's got uh, width dx. It's got a cross-section area a. And we're just going to write the mass balance on it. right? So we have mass coming in with some flow rate, and here we're writing a, a balance on the water phase. So the mass coming in is water. It's the mass of water coming in. We have some mass coming out that's going to be the mass of water uh, coming out plus, or I'm sorry, the mass of water coming in plus any wa water, any change in the rate of mass, spatial change in rate of mass squared out, dx times A, right. and then we're also going to allow for the fact that we can have a well or an injection source, right, so we'll, we'll use N tilde for that, right. and so then if we just write the mass balance, so it's what comes in plus what goes out, you know, what comes in minus what goes out. equals, well, yeah. must equal what's accumulated, and then what's accumulated is a time rate of change of mass in that control volume. And so we'll just write that partial M W partial T. Okay. 
of course, these guys cancel. So then we have the time rate of change of uh, mass coming in here, m dot w is equal to the density of water times the velocity of water. And m here in the, in the accumulation term is going to be equal to the density of water times the saturation of water times the porosity times the volume. And the volume is going to be also, you can also write the volume as A dx. And that's constant. So our control volume doesn't change with time. So you can pull it outside the time derivative. And if we do that, we get this equation. Look at that because the, the dxa, dxa cancel. So the saturation comes from the fact that you know, the mass, so the mass in the control volume at the beginning is the the, the mass of water, so this is the total volume of water, I'm sorry, the, the, the density is the, uh, the total mass of water divided by the total water volume of the water in the aqueous phase, right? But there's only water in the aqueous phase in this model. Now later we'll see that's not true. Uh, times the saturation is the percentage of water in the mixture, right? So the mixture being aqueous plus gas plus ole, right? So we have something called, you know, sort of a volume fraction constraint that you know, the saturation of the water plus the saturation of the oil plus the saturation of the gas must equal one. So these are the, you know, the volume percentage of water in the mixture, the volume percentage of oleic phase in the mixture, the volume percentage of gaseous phase in the mixture. Those have to equal one. Uh, yeah, so when I, so you have it there, uh, and so th th this term goes there, and this term goes there, but the ADX is constant because my control volume is constant. It doesn't change with time. So then I have an ADX here, and I canceled it. I just did it all in one step. Uh, yeah, I guess technically, yeah, but we're gonna fix it in a second so that it's 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 a flow rate. It just this is just the 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 injected uh, and and so I didn't really give this a unit yet, but we're gonna we're gonna fix it in a second. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I guess you know that would be the it's going to end up in a second as a volumetric flow rate. So yeah, it, I mean, it doesn't you know it doesn't really matter. So anyway, the the last point I want to make is that you know this equation we've seen before. The only thing is, you have the saturation term in it, right? But because of that volume fraction constraint up there, if you have a single phase mixture, that means there's no oil, there's no gas. Then S W is equal to one. You plug in a one right there, and you have back the single phase mass balance equation we've already seen.
So the, the way, the way I guess I should have wrote it is that you know, this term right here is the mass times the volume injected, and then you divide it out. So I should have wrote, I should have wrote it here. So, so then we have, remember, we have Bw is the reservoir volume of the aqueous phase. over the stock tank volume of the aqueous phase. So that's going to give you the volume of water under reservoir conditions over the volume of water under standard conditions. That's equal to the density under standard conditions over the density under reservoir conditions. Again, we want to solve these equations in the reservoir. So our, the density that appears in that mass balance equation is the density in the, re, in the reservoir, right? the density of the fluid in the reservoir. And so if we plug that back in, So now we have a volumetric flow rate there because we divided the mass by the density. So this is your mass balance equation for water, and that'll be one of the equations we want to solve. Now, 